<sighs> so weird. <laughs> Guys. Gender neutral, please. <laughs> We wanted to throw a party that all of our friends would feel comfortable to go to. Like so many of my friends come from all different intersections of society and for us to be able to go to a mainstream club on a Saturday night together wasn't something we could really do at the time. You walk into that party and you just feel like you belong there. It's a place where you can just get super crazy. There's nothing off limits. There's like people dancing on top of the decks, there's people half naked, people rolling around. It's just an absolute carnival. Easy Day is all about how music brings people together. You know, we're actually more connected with each other than we are separate. So you'd think that having a conversation about diversity and inclusion would be easier than it is but sometimes people need a brand or something to latch onto to really get their heads around it. Queer people get to go to these amazing venues and just be themselves, which is amazing. And the punters that were traditionally just like rock up to Fabric or Ministry on, on a Saturday night, they walk in and they're so shocked. But then, you know, just a few hours later, they've had like the best time of their lives and they walk out without that sense of otherness and just with a different perspective. Just even saying he, she, they, that phrase in itself and those three words makes you think. I'm here for every body type shaking it. I'm here for every race like getting down and every sexual preference looking fab and feeling cunty. So it's just really cool to be here now in 2023 and be able to align with collectives like he, she, they, who are all about promoting that. Walk, he, him, give, he, sir, pose, them. Slay for me, slay for me. If you go to a typical queer space, there are normally three cis, male, white, gay DJs DJing and men with six packs dancing. And then if you go to a non-queer space, you tend to have three cis, straight, white, male DJs and women dancing. So everything there is through the male gaze and through a cis, white, male gaze. If you were a black trans woman, it's not to say that you're not allowed in those spaces, but being allowed in and being welcomed in are two very different things. So what we do is we change who is behind the decks and who are dancing. And that shows people when they look up and they see somebody who's maybe say the same body type as them or the same skin color or the same gender, that they go, okay, I'm not just allowed in here. I'm welcomed in here. Here is a space for me. Back in sort of 2017, when we were conceiving this idea and pitching it, there wasn't so much talk about pronouns and sexuality and representation as there is now. So I do think that we're in a unique position where we're like one of the only queer and female owned club nights that's international, record label that's international and, and also management companies that are set up in this way that are entirely independent. So because of that, I think we get the ear of a lot of people. We're on the American tour right now. We had a fantastic show in New York last weekend. The vibe was amazing. And yeah, we've just landed in San Francisco. He, she, they comes up so naturally in conversations. <laughs> it's educational and not just being a party. It's actually a, a platform to like talk to promoters in a very like unique and like organic way about how to create diverse lineups and how to sell that to their audiences in a way where it's not contrived. Hey everybody, thanks so much for coming out tonight. Woo! Thanks for tuning in at home. Uh, Tonight is the five-year anniversary of He, She, They, San Francisco edition. We'll be at Public Works, doors at 10. 
there's limited tickets available. So come early, stay late, don't sleep. I don't care. Yay! I think what makes Hishi Day so important to me is just growing up as a woman in music, I never really felt like I was represented fairly in the music that I loved. When I came into really working more directly with musicians at Liaison Artists, the roster was primarily men. And you know, obviously there's nothing wrong with that, but educating the younger audience to have a bit more diversity in what they listen to and also seeing representation on the stage of who they are is so important. Everyone's at a different stage with their diversity. For some venues and cities, being more inclusive just means looking at a more 50-50 gender split on a dance floor. But perhaps there's still some way to go before a whole spectrum of queer people feel super welcome in that space. San Francisco is like a super historic city with a beautiful queer history and, and always being a queer friendly city. So for us to do an inclusive party here, it's kind of mad. I'm definitely a queer person who often has insecurities about like where I truly fit in. I often feel like an anomaly and I feel like this is a space that I can truly just be me and like be really accepted. And I know that there's a lot of people who feel that way too. I think even in queer spaces, like, you know, the patriarchy still exists, you know, and it's just like Kishi there really provided a good platform for us to kind of just like come together and be ourselves. We don't really like the term safe space. I don't really think those safe spaces exist. We are actively inviting people that this is a space for everybody. But we are asking people to be brave and come into that space. We are asking our trans friends and the, and the whole community and everybody to, to come into those spaces. And that's extremely brave of them. I feel like that power that we all love to spread towards each other, a positivity, even if you're a little bit weird or a little bit wonky or maybe have a sit on your face, I think it's like, let's glamorize that, let's lift it up and celebrate everything that's in between. Kishi Bay is connecting the little intricate webs of community that we all have in the different cities. And then there's like an anchor point for us all to hold space together. They've just not gave a fuck, <laughs> basically. They go into super clubs and take over their busiest nights just to show the world that this is what we're here for and this is how it's going to be and we're not going anywhere. It's a place for everyone to come and be together for the same thing, which is music. We've done parties in 15 countries around the world, but the ones that I feel really move culture are when you do things in regional places. So we did a Hishi Bay back in Newcastle. You had like trans representation, queer representation, people of color. There were so many people who come up to us who were like, I can't believe as a queer person, I'm in this space and I feel safe. And it's not just what we do in that moment, it's then other club nights spring up from that. And I felt like that is why we really do he, she, they. I was born in Sunderland in a little council house or Pebble Dash and stuff. It's a funny place. It, it had a lot of kind of brutalistic buildings, was kind of still bearing the brunt of recessions and was kind of blighted by Thatcher's Tory government and we were losing shipyards and coal mines and stuff like that. So there's definitely a little bit of a sense of bleakness. Even as a kid, you could kind of uh, pick up on the sense of that. 
I got a scholarship into a really posh school called Durham. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to afford to go. It put me in a little bit of a weird position because I was kind of the poor kid at the posh school. But then my friends from back home kind of saw me as the posh kid because I went to the posh school. So I was kind of Pygmalion between the two things. So we've come back to Sunderland today in the high street. So I used to go clubbing here as a youngin when I was about 15 on a dodgy fake ID. And um, my drag character, Sandra, I'm going to go on a little shopping trip for her. So Sandra is a kind of composite character that I made up of like, it's a homage to like powerful working class Northern women. And uh, they like to get um, all the stuff from like charity shops and stuff. Oh, this is beautiful. That looks amazing. That's, that's definitely a bit of Sandra. I don't know, I have this really like strong concept of who Sandra is in my head. It needs to be like bold and brash and clunky and big and like that's what all this stuff is. It's, it, it looks amazing. Like, But you were asking us before, would I go and do Sandra here on the street? Absolutely not. I've already got broken nose. I don't need a second one. Oh, this is amazing. So yeah, we, we, we like something with a bit of stretch to us. Double bubble. Amazing. <laughs> right, so you're going to buy that. Thank you so much. Growing up, there's no gay bars or anything like that. There was nothing, there was no signs that that, that culture existed at all. It wasn't like, because everyone was like madly homophobic all the time, it just, there was just no presence at all. So I do social media just on the hoof. Like now I've just done a post for International Women's Day. I'm always a bit scared that we'll get some kind of backlash. For the first five to 10 minutes, I'm always like looking back on the post and just making sure have I, is it fine? Have I somehow offended loads of people or whatever? I don't mind if I offend some right, right wing like idiot, but I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna miss cure it entirely. Cause you know, Everyone's in a state of learning. But so far, thankfully so good, people seem to resonate with the message, so it's good. Music always played a really big part in my childhood. My mum was a big uh, Kate Bush fan, and I just remember putting on the vinyl and hearing it and just having this moment where I just, even from that, I knew I wanted to work in music. It was really nice, actually, uh, when Kate Bush came back and did a tour, I managed to take my mum Thank you for Stranger Things for bringing her back. Hiya, come on in. Our family has a big history of being very accepting. My dad, who was a primary school teacher in the 50s, helped another teacher um, elope with a Nigerian boyfriend who everybody was against, but just love is love, so we're, we're very accepting of whoever and whatever somebody is, as, as long as they're a nice yeah, person. Because at the basically. time, 100%, you were not allowed to have interracial not then. relationships and stuff, so, yeah. And and especially not in the North East, you know. When Nan and Grandad died, they left all the photograph albums and I've got them all now, so I've been trying to put them all into one place, so. I, I grew up with all my grandparents, but sadly I saw all my grandparents pass in. I also saw um, our Andrew, kind of my brother, just unexpectedly pass away when I was like 16 and he was 14. He was 14, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know when people say, oh, you might get hit by a bus tomorrow, you never know. But you might never know. So rather than kind of regret all the things that like, when I was 60, oh, you could have done this or you could have done that. It's just like, I'm just going to go and try them. I'm just going to try and do them. The best thing you can do is live. Really, 100% you're, is the best you, way to honour. They can't live anymore, which is so sad, but you can, and while you're here, make the most of, of every opportunity. Yeah, no, 100%. My name's Steve, and this is my mum. She's divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just sing this. Not good. We just get on really well, like, as much as friends, and I really value the fact that, like, my mum knows everything about me, so she has a very... And, and vice I would versa. Say hopefully not everything. Well, actually, fairly everything, to be honest. You just sort of knew. And one of my friends who is gay was saying to me a long time ago, 
has Stephen come out yet. It wasn't a surprise. And I guess... I think they just thought I was going to grow up weird. I was either going to be queer or a serial killer. <laughs> Cute little chunky kid, you were sweet. When I'd say that my mum wanted us to be gay, it's like... I didn't want you to be gay. I didn't want you to be happy. didn't want me to be gay. Because when I grew up, all kind of media portrayals are like, if you were gay, then you'd lose all your friends and family instantly. So I just, I got brought up with the weight of that. And sometimes that fear of not belonging is actually because society tells you that you're othered, but it's an actually a reality. So having a place that says everybody's welcome, hopefully permeates through the people who come to our night and everything and just, just helps a bit. I think he said there doesn't stop at the club door, does no. it? No. It, it's it's a, a kind of an ethos really, as well as a club night. It's about, 100%. it pervades through through your social media, pervades through the way you advertise, mm. you know, all that sort of stuff. If my propaganda is making a more inclusive and diverse world, then like, do you know what? I'm quite merry to be like attacked for that. From a parent's point of view, it is quite scary seeing him sort of stick his neck out and go for something that's not dead mainstream, that's not, you know, socially acceptable to everybody. And I don't mind that. I mean, I've always said to him, go out, try what you do. The worst thing is you'll have to come home. When I was in gay spaces, gay people didn't know what to do with me. I didn't have a six pack. I wasn't a twink. I was later was chubby, but I wasn't hairy, so I wasn't a bear. And I was somewhere between a goth and a chap. And people didn't know where to place me. I'm too queer to be straight and I'm too straight to be queer for some people. I actually think you can either think of these things are othering you or you're not fitting in, or you can just make them the USP. There is nobody with a composite like me. This was my first kind of music job in Newcastle where I used to fly it for Promising Foundation and Shindig and everyone would fly it and it would be banner and it was it was good times. It was really fun actually. Uh, there's my best mate, Mr. Paul Zand. <laughs> good to see you man. You, know, you don't come back enough anymore. No I don't. Although it's well, no, it's getting better. Yeah. You, yeah. You do you, you don't do. get to go down as much anymore, know. that's the thing. To London or? <laughs> oh, yeah, just in general. <laughs> just in general. When I was first coming out and he was one of the first people that knew where nobody else knew, like, I wouldn't have gone to queer places if it wasn't for him being there, like, kind of holding my hand through stuff, saying it's all right, because I didn't have queer friends. It wasn't a big deal to us. Um, it was probably a bigger deal to me, wasn't it? Far bigger, yeah. yeah. It doesn't change anything. It's like, he is who he is and we love him regardless. I certainly do. It's, it makes no difference to me whatsoever. And I guess it's those sort of things that made me feel very comfortable that like he, she, they and stuff like that. You know, I've been around now so many different kinds of people and they've all, you know, added something to my life. The world would be a boring place if we're all the same. Story of our life, Steve, isn't it? Getting fish and chips. There's a common misconception with Hishi though that people think that we are a queer brand and a queer collective. It's really important to me as a straight person that it's really seen as an inclusive brand. It's so important that a person of colour or a larger person or a straight woman feels just as comfortable and just as willing to push their boundaries in our space as queer people. As much as we love and champion all queer rights, like, it's, it's really important that people sort of see that we are literally for everybody. The brand is now five years old and in the first year we, we ticked off some incredible highlights. So many of the things that we're doing 
we've not done before and some brands have never thought about or done before on the global scale that we're doing. So it kind of almost feels a little bit like we're out of control of it a little bit. It's doing its thing and it's become this kind of community and movement that, that means something and we're kind of like running along around it and behind it like making spreadsheets and like just <laughs> making the thing fucking work basically as best we can. Okay, I'm gonna start ferrying these down. We make all our light boxes ourselves. We've designed all the posters ourselves. Our entire brand fits in a suitcase that's either at his house or my house. And we have to ship it between each other depending on who's getting on a plane to a different country that day. And that's the brand. That's how it travels. <laughs> I'm from a little town in Oxfordshire called Banbury. Pretty sleepy market town. I just knew from a young age, from probably about 11, that I was never gonna stay in this place. I was always just kind of dreaming about traveling the world and getting to London. My first weekend away from home was when I was 17. I stayed up for about five hours trying to get a Glastonbury ticket. Going to Glastonbury and having that experience of 250,000 people in this electric atmosphere for like five days and soaking up all of these, you know, interactions with people that I'd never met before at 17 just intoxicated me. I realized how big the world was kind of in, in one weekend. I came home and I remember my mum opening the front door to me and I was obviously, you know, five days deep. I just told her that I'd decided that I was gonna change all my university options from English to music and that I just I'd realised what I wanted to do. Uh, she told me I was mad and to go and have a shower. <laughs> so, but it stuck and I just felt this feeling inside me that, I'd, that I needed to follow. No matter where you're from, all of the other intersectionality points that have brought you all to this field like melt away in that like one hour that everyone's watching that act, singing along together, like raving together on a drop, like whatever the thing is. And now with He She Day to be part of curating a particular atmosphere where we're creating that and we're creating our own version and brand of that, it's amazing behind the scenes just as much as on the dance floor. Growing up in the 90s, with the movement of things like the Spice Girls, it definitely felt that there was more kind of female empowerment coming through, but it certainly was an era where everything was about being as, as thin as possible, or at least it felt like that to me in terms of all of the, the, the explosion of tabloids, magazines, everything was all about how much weight has someone gained, how much weight has someone lost and been congratulated for it. And that was definitely something that I felt at school and something that I felt looking in the mirror, I felt like I kind of didn't really fit the mould, to be honest, of, of what was, you know, typically attractive at that time. What's the deal with swearing, by the way? <sighs> Fuck's sake, sorry. <laughs> we are in Whitechapel in London at the moment, and we are about to go and film the... <sighs> We're about to go and shoot a Web3 creative uh, for Beatport's new I.O. platform with loads of our He She Day family. And how do you feel about being <sighs> Don't love it <laughs> at all. I think what's really special about Ishi Day is they have such a vibrant, very closely knit um, community. We're creating three-dimensional painting and um, featuring a lot of the members of this community. Working with all these different artists, it, it all feels like family. So bringing them all together, seeing the passion that they bring into this project and for this testament of diversity. Yeah, since I've been up since 5am. You've been up since 5am. Yeah, I live in Oxfordshire. I can't afford to live in London right now, sadly. Being in the limelight is one of my least favourite things, but it's really important for me to kind of represent people that were other, like 
I have definitely had experiences of that in my life a lot which cannot compare to a lot of the other people that are involved in He, She, Day, but had some pretty savage bullying incidents when I was growing up because of my size and how I looked. But I do think a level of visibility is important. I don't think there's too many other women who aren't DJs who are running international brands like this in electronic music. I'd love to see more of them. So I do think it's important that I put myself into a spotlight at certain points and show visibility, but it's not my favorite. Yeah. What about this? Yeah. Better? Yeah. yeah. I feel with the ethos that we push at He, She, They about experimentation is encouraged, and we ask so many people to be brave and courageous coming into our spaces that I feel it's important for me to also face my own fears and trauma and experiment and develop as a person and stand side by side with all our performers and our residents to show that I'm willing to push myself as much as, as they're willing to push themselves in the limelight. So the next two weeks, we're gonna process this data. So there are a couple of algorithms pulling all of these data points together to form three-dimensional sculptures. Then our creative director, an artist, um, Ennis, will fuse them and create this three-dimensional art piece with multiple effects and lightings and we'll have this kind of renaissance painting but a very futuristic version of that. The reason that I find that I can stand there and complete these projects and do it, it has to not be for me but the fact that it is actually for everyone to do with this project and I, I have to kind of take myself out of myself and think about how important it is for this whole story to be told for everybody. Like, He, She, They doesn't just belong to Stephen and I. It belongs to everybody who's danced with us, be it on the stage as our dancers or on the dance floors, all the DJs, everyone who's ever bought a track or interacted with the brand or given us some support on social media, whatever the thing is, like, it's, it belongs to everybody. Yeah. Hishine has allowed me to find confidence, it's allowed me to find family, it's allowed me to find a space where I can feel comfortable. Usually it's a bit of a struggle to navigate society as a transgender of colour and um, Hishine is it's a really open space where um, I'm not yet judged, I am not persecuted, I am not demonised um, for being who I am. Trans people in particular are just being used as such a political pawn at the moment. Everyone seems so focused about judging who they are and judging how they think they're going to hurt other people. They are just trying to live their lives. I find it really weird that people want to vilify this tiny minority of people who are just trying to exist. They're not asking for more rights than anyone, just the same, just to not be victimised. Around time, you've always had that, from Jewish people to queer people to uh, people of colour. There's always been a, a group that's always targeted as the source of all ills for people. Society is still designed only for cis heteronormative people. People being able to now have terminology to describe how they feel and who they are in ways that we've never really had before. It's so important not just for those groups of people to support each other, 
but for everybody to support everybody. Gay marriage would not have been legalised if it hadn't also been for straight people voting for it. Women wouldn't have been able to vote unless men also agreed and helped them get that over the line. And I think it's so important to fight for people's rights and especially for trans rights. Every day, trans women without gender recognition certificates use women's bathrooms, women's changing rooms, women's domestic violence services, and they are allowed to. And cis women are not harmed by this. Trans women are not a threat. If you are afraid of trans women, you're afraid of toxic cis men who are pretending to be trans women. And that is so rare. They are the bravest group of people that I've ever met to so unashamedly live their own truth and feel that they're going to live authentically, that they are willing to have to deal with so much ridicule and so much hate from people that have never even taken the chance to try and get to know them or understand what they're going through. For queer people, community and nightlife is the most important thing because it's where you can go to have your euphoric moments and your like your joy and there's doors that block out the rest of the chaos and you can just be with each other and not have to worry about all that shit. So I think that they're the most important thing for the survival of our community. I can't believe I'm gonna do a poem at a club, I'm so sorry. But bear with me, all it lovely, so I'm sure you'll be alright. It's been a really chaotic couple of days. Right, I've had some terrible press attention for a campaign that I did, a fashion campaign, um, that I was really proud of and I thought was really beautiful, but the far-right press did not, so it's been really tricky. Have you ever met someone so precious that you want to save them? Not, not save as in fix or change, but save them as in make them safe. But Sophia and Brains have reached out and asked me to come and make something positive out of the whole situation and just do something nice for the community. And it's just such a beautiful night and I'm really grateful to be here. But I'm going to be me though, unapologetically me though. I've gone through too much not to be proud to be seen, seen though and, and I'll, I'll fight, fight anyone, anyone who doesn't want my siblings to be free. See, the thing about me is I just want to get old like you peacefully or unpeacefully, and I'll keep hacking at this path until it gets easy. I wasn't born boy, but I was born king. I'll fucking burn it all down for my siblings. I'm dying, yeah, I keep trying, and I've lost count of the days that I've spent just lying in bed with it. They're many, but we are one. Yeah, yeah they, they are, are many, but we are one. I am on boy, but I am not undone. Thank you so much. Eventually, things will hopefully be so inclusive that he, she, they, as it exists right now, might not be necessary. People are making steps in the right direction, but I still am the only female on a lot of lineups, the only queer person on a lot of lineups, the only black person on a lot of lineups, so I still feel there's a long way to go definitely in the industry. I mean, just from five years ago, being female DJs on a lineup was even rarer than it is now. And now well, you're starting to see, you know, he should they just continuing to push all different types of people. I mean, we've got a long way to go, but even in just that time, you can notice a difference. We all get on really, really well and ultimately we're all ravers and we all have a passion for the scene and the dance floor and creating core memories and life moments, not just for ourselves and the people involved in this, but for everyone that wants to come and join us in this movement. Like we're also woven into it as well. It's not just like we're trust fund kids throwing a club night from afar. We're like, this is a labor of love because we want to prove the concept, right? Yeah, 100%. Here we are, an epic ministry of sound, where we did our first ever party here. Our party at Ministry of Sound is a bit of a kind of homecoming where we threw our first ever party. And here we are, our fifth birthday, with a pandemic thrown in between, and able to come and celebrate with all of our London family. <laughs> Okay, so we've got all this messaging, signage, in order to create some sort of a 
you know, shared house rules for the club. You know, make a space a he, she, they space. You know, like the house rules of don't touch the performers. You know, some people don't know how to behave around performers or don't know what the parameters are. Somehow if you're DJing or dancing, everyone just thinks your body's yeah. it's open season. Sup. So it's just a sad reflection of our society that to have views that are about promoting diversity and fairness and opportunities and that shouldn't necessarily make you an activist but when we live in a world which wants to restrict the rights of marginalized people then any attempt to go against that does make you an activist company. Well, that's pretty good. For us, every single night, we don't want there to be any issues. We want everyone to feel comfortable and happy. Everybody is welcome tonight, but we expect that we're going to have a lot of members of the LGBTQIA community come in. If someone chooses to be searched by a female member of staff, that would be really amazing if they could have that choice. Gender inclusive language on the door would be great. Not using the language, hey guys, or assuming someone's gender, hey folks, hey everyone. We're going to have some gender neutral bathrooms this evening as well, so we don't envisage any problems there. We've done it at parties here before it's all been great it's just about giving everyone a really nice welcome as they come in the venue to set the tone for the atmosphere inside would be really appreciated because that's the important thing often i don't look when i do oh, it yes, we oh. think different colors different colors definitely it's yeah, gonna make it's it gonna make your yeah. eyes pop to a different audience <laughs> <laughs> again it only looks weird because i've not <laughs> when the wig's on it all, uh, it all it comes together. together it blends and vanishes is it though yeah. darling is it but are we doing your is it really is that the tired? future of track what brought you to london Freedom, absolutely a freedom. I must say, freedom, yeah, to be myself fully. Welcome, darling, to the circus. Welcome to Hishi Day! Yeah. We really like to have a lot of dancers at the show. They raise a fucking roof on the energy and they are just as important at the night as the DJs. We were all freaked, you know, well, I'm from Poland and I was the only freak in the village, you know. And then everyone's from a different spot in the world, but then we're all coming here to London. We live in the East London bubble of fabulousness. Glitter, glamour, everything, yes? And we all, incredible friends and we're sharing such amazing stories upon stories of love of friendship of dancing and loving the music and expressing ourselves i feel so accepted and loved and like i've never been before in my whole life you know this is it it's fabulous let's be lovers I need to get it off my chest All the love I have in me The best, nothing but the best I need to get it off my chest All the love I have in me For me, as a person with disability, I've been stared at my whole life, basically. And now we can show ourselves and invite people to stare. This is what we are doing, this is what I do. The dynamic of this, it's really interesting and I feel like I'm educating people. It's really, really liberating and it's really powerful, actually. This brand has helped us push the boundaries of who we are as people just as much as the message that we're putting out there. Like Stephen doing drag for the first time has kind of like come into its own through this brand. Me being confident to wear certain things. We're in a position where we have to kind of take the chance to use the platform that we have, use the privilege that we have in terms of being cis white people and try and create more platforms for everybody around us. And to be honest, just showcase everyone's incredible talent.
I think it's important to have a really diverse dance floor because you start to get those moments of synergy between people that you might not have crossed paths with. That's how you bridge gaps, that's how you meet people and how we expand. It doesn't matter what size you are or what background you are or what orientation you are, I think if you're all here for the same music you can all connect on a different level and the rest shouldn't really matter. Beyond the dance floor, seeing people in these spaces, it's creating a wider conversation about the core issues of the politics that they believe in. If everyone just changes the little piece of world that's around them, then everything would change, and much faster. Dance music is always going to be political. He, she, they, artists who are given a platform to talk and share their music with the world, they're being loud in the best way possible about good things. Let's work. Let's work. Ooh, ooh. Watch us to be good, bang. I could do it back like a boomerang.